Hi, I'm Shannon, and today I'm going to share with you how I make my own little index card caddies or quote-unquote drawers. Now, I have these all over. <laughs> I have one on each of my desks, and then I have them stashed on little shelves for my um, how I store my ideas and my thoughts and different plans for projects and books that I have. So first of all, this is the one that I have by my writing station as well as another one over on my work desk. And so inside, I'm going to take you on a quick little tour. I like it because it enables me to have everything literally at arm's reach at any time. I always have one of my favorite pens, which is a Bic Glide. I have two sizes of post-it notes, both a three by three and then a little one and a half by two, I think it is. I have my chapstick. I have my lotion, my favorite hand cream. I have two different sections for notes and info. This is the one off my work desk. So these are sectioning off information that I need to frequently pull out and reference for when I'm working. And then I also have a crap ton <laughs> of index cards. And these are not my nice ones. These are my cheapy blank index cards from Target, the up and up, because they're just, I use them constantly for scratch paper. And so I can just always pull one out, write down what I need to remember, get it off my mind, and then either recycle it or fold it up in my put it in my pocket if it's a grocery list or my to-do list or what have you. And then I also keep a um, handy dandy little calculator because even though I'm a writer, I do a lot of word counts and measurements and things like that. But the undisputed great feature of my little caddy here, I have to say, is these, this little knob. It does not come this way. I decide, I found these little drawer knobs and I figured out how to put it on here and it's removable. So if I ever choose that I don't want to use it or maybe for whatever reason I want to put it on the end, I can always take it off. But today I'm going to teach you um, how I do this and share with you all the supplies that you need in order to make one of these for yourself. So the first thing you need is like it bricks. <clears throat> now I get these. Now, first of all, I have to tell you, I went on a journey. <laughs> the world that we live in is not set up for analog people like myself and presumably like you if you're watching this video. I am what I like to call an analog advocate. I like pen and paper. I like writing things down by hand, index cards, notebook paper, notebooks, whatever. Um, and index cards, for whatever reason, is just they're just my jam. But the world we live in is very much digitally driven. They're always pointing you to all of these latest and greatest digital tools. Well, uh, I, I like my index cards. Thank you very much. So it's difficult to find good index card supplies. So I found I took a couple index cards with me and I went to store after store to you know after store. I went to thrift stores. I went to Target. Um, I went through the kitchen section. I went through the stationery sections. Uh, and uh, at the container store, I found these. These are called Like It Bricks. And specifically, it is the medium slash short size in a four inch depth. It's short because it's only about two inches high. It's four inches wide. And it's medium um, just because of the width. So that's the size you need. It is a like it brick and a medium short with a four inch depth. And they come in different colors, clear, white. I think there's a gray as well. Now you can get these at the container store for between five to seven dollars. Right now they're on sale, I think, for four seven no, excuse me, five seventy nine. So I went and picked up a few more. You can find them on Amazon. I'll actually leave a link to both the container store product as well as uh, Amazon. However, on Amazon, they don't sell this size individually. It comes in a set of three different sizes, but you can get them on Amazon if you don't want to go through the container store. So you need at least one of these. Then you need a set of Like It Bricks dividers, and this is what they look like. They come two in a package. Again, this was five to seven dollars, depending on when you buy it. And the dividers, which you get two, cost anywhere from two to three dollars per package. The other thing you will need is some kind of drawer knob. Now, 
this is the kind that I've chosen and have been using for years. In fact, I've bought three different sets because I've made more of these little caddies. But I get these off Amazon. Um, they're cheap. They're, they've got a really nice weight to them. They're polished. And they, they're just the right amount of space for my fingers. I have psoriatic arthritis, so I needed something that was going to be easy for me to grip and hold and move. Um, and I found that these solid metal and drawer knobs really fit the bill. So I'm going to leave a link to these below, but you, you do you if you find something pretty, maybe you like cer the look of ceramic, you know, get what you like. The important thing is you're going to want to make sure that you have screws that are going to be the right depth. And let me show you if you go with what I purchased, what you get. Um, the smallest set you can get is five. And I think I spent about 10 bucks on this. And to me, that's not a lot of money for, for five solid metal um, knobs that are going to last me forever. So when you buy them, this particular set, inside you'd find five of these packages. And each knob is very carefully wrapped up in a little piece of foam, which I like to protect it from getting scratched. But then it comes with two different sizes of screws. And uh, yeah, these ain't going to work. <laughs> They're way too long. So, something to know about these is oftentimes when you buy drawer knobs, they're going to come with machine screws, not wood screws. That's very important. And for my purposes, and if you go with these, you're going to want an M4, a machine 4 screw in a 0.7 depth because you can see this is way too long. This one here would almost work, but it's still way too long and we need that space for our index cards. Let me see if I can find the package that I purchased. Oh yeah, here we go. This I'm gonna leave a link to this below too. This is what I purchased off Amazon. This is dirt cheap. You get a whole bunch of screws. So one package will do you. But M4-0.7, that's the right depth you want because you want the screw to go into the knob enough to create some real stability because when your caddy gets filled up with index cards, woo, this can get heavy. So you want to make sure that that screw's got a real good grip on your um, knob. Last but not least, I this you don't have to. This isn't essential. But I like to use washers to put against both sides of the Like It brick just so it doesn't get scratched up. And it gives it a little more stability, I find. And for that, you can buy M4 washers, flat washers on Amazon. Again, real cheap. And I think, boy, how many did I get? I got 40 of them. <laughs> and so um, this is buy one and done and you're going to have them forever. But I, I really think it's worth the investment. I believe it was less than six bucks. Again, I'll leave a link to that below as well. So once you have all of that, let's assemble it. Oh, and the other thing you hopefully have on hand, you're going to want a Phillips screwdriver with a long shaft, ideally because it's going to make screwing the knob onto your like it break very very easy so first things first take your screw take a washer and then I like to put it you need to figure out where you want your knob I like it front and center so I literally just put it right in the center and I hold it in place with my finger inside and then I put the other washer flat against the plastic so can you see that I have a washer flat against the like it brick both on the inside and on the outside and then I'm just going to get it started with my hand here and screw the knob on and I'm going to finish the job by weaving my screwdriver through the like it brick and then holding it in place and spinning my knob on and then I'm going to give it a nice tight squeeze here to make sure it's really on there well. Perfect. That knob is going nowhere. And I even when it's filled with index cards, because it's a, a almost three quarters of an inch long, it's going deep into the knob. So it's got a really good grip. And those washers there also give it more stability as well. So next, our dividers. You get two, and where you place them in your caddy is really up to you. But I like to place one as close to the screw as possible because, well, I'm a little OCD, and I don't like this screw 
leaving any impression or scratching up any of my index cards. Those are my ideas. <laughs> Those are important. And so I like to um, protect my index cards by putting one of the dividers literally right up against that. So to, to do these, to use these dividers, they're just, they're sturdy, they're really thick, they're rigid, but they bend just enough to enable you to slip these little tabs into the notches in the like it brick. And it has some printing on one side with an arrow showing you which side goes down. I found that it doesn't really matter, but I like to put the printing facing in because again, I want a really clean flat edge that's going to be touching my index cards. So, and then I just slide it in diagonally and then bend and I place the two notches in the bottom. Let's see, you can see that. There you go. And then I bend it ever so slightly to get it into the notches on the other side. There you go. And then you get a really nice clean look too because you're just gonna see the white through these holes on the front, no matter what kind of index cards you have in the back. And then with the final divider, again, you could place it anywhere in the caddy you want. I really like it smack dab in the middle and I'm gonna tell you why. Now I have two sections. I can divide my, I can use this to divide my index cards. Maybe I works in progress and then future ideas here. The other reason I like it is because maybe I haven't filled up my caddy with index cards and it helps keep the index cards standing. Or oftentimes too, I'll put blank index cards in the back so I know just grab it from the back and then index cards actually have information on them in the front. But let me show you what this looks like with index cards in it. These are just blank index cards for purposes. But you can see it is almost the exact right width for my index cards. It's, it's phenomenal. And boy, how much does this hold? I would say you could probably get 400 index cards in just one of these caddies. Um, but there you have it. This is how you put together an index card caddy or like I said, drawer. Um, I'm going to put up some pictures on the screen so you can see how I use them around my um, office area as well too. But I hope you've liked this tutorial and I hope that if you are an index card fanatic, you can build some of these index card caddies for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and if you like this video, please don't forget to click like and uh, if you're not already a subscriber, I invite you to join our community. Again, thanks so much for watching and until the next video, bye-bye.